When you were born again, you received the Holy Spirit and he isn't going to abandon you. Jesus said so himself. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. That's John chapter 14, verse 16. The Holy Spirit doesn't abandon the true believer, but even after you receive the Holy Spirit, you can receive fresh infillings of his power again and again. The baptism with the Holy Spirit is both a well and a river, a constant state of being and a continual flow. Now, many are under the impression that the Holy Spirit didn't show up until Acts chapter two. In fact, the Holy Spirit was at work since the beginning and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. That's Genesis chapter one, verse two. Now I wanna show you a biblical example of a group of people receiving the power of the Holy Spirit again and again in new, fresh ways. Take a look at the 72 disciples of Jesus. They were given power to cast out demons and preach the gospel. Now the Lord chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. That's Luke chapter 10, verses one and 17. Now, what power was it that enabled these 72 disciples to cast out demons? It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus expelled demons by the means of the power of the Holy Spirit. But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. That's Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. If Jesus needed the power of the Holy Spirit to cast out demons, then the 72 definitely needed the same. Yet these same people who had already received that power, the 72, were among or some of those among the crowd that received the Holy Spirit by the breath of Christ. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. That's John chapter 20, verse 22. So the 72 disciples received the power of the Holy Spirit when they were released to preach and drive out demons. Then some of them were present when Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. They received the power to preach and exercise demons. Then they received the power to wait in faith. Yet again, this same group had another experience. For in Acts chapter two, the Holy Spirit graced the church in a new way. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They were all filled. That's Acts chapter two, verses one through four. It didn't end there. For this same group, Peter and John among them, was filled with the Holy Spirit again. Take a look at Acts chapter four. On their release, Peter and John returned to their own people and reported everything that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When the believers heard this, they lifted up their voices to God with one accord. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. That's Acts 4, 23 through 24. Now listen to what they prayed. And now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with complete boldness as you stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That's Acts 4, 29 and 30. So they prayed for boldness, but didn't they already receive that when they received the Holy Spirit? They prayed for miracles, but hadn't they been already seeing miracles? You see, they were praying for a fresh touch of power. But then take a look at this. Those believers, some of the 72 among them, those who had already been filled for ministry, those who had already been breathed upon by Jesus, those who had already received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, experienced yet another infilling and preached with even greater boldness. After they had prayed, their meeting place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God 
boldly. That's Acts 4.31. So they didn't necessarily receive more of the Holy Spirit. Rather, they surrendered more of themselves and experienced greater measures, newer touches of the Holy Spirit's power. May you receive His touch every day, again and again. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your Moment of Truth. This message was taken from my latest book, Praying in the Holy Spirit. Order now at Amazon.com. For more free teachings like this, make sure you're signed up to my emailing list so that I can send you weekly emails with content that will help you to grow spiritually. Go to DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash email. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.